Okay, we're looking at some simple examples to demonstrate the geometry involved in the fundamental theorem of calculus. And we'll start off with the simplest possible example. That is f of x is equal to 1. Okay, that's easy. Let's draw that. That's a height of 1 right there, and it's just flat. So let's put some x values down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now what we want to do is imagine a line right here sliding to the right. And as it moves to the right, it sweeps out some area behind it. So it can move across. And you imagine it moving across gradually. But at different x values, it's obviously swept out a different amount of area at each point. So what we're going to do down here on this bottom axis is we're going to graph the area. So this is a graph of A versus X. How much area has been accumulated under this graph as we move to the right? As this vertical line here moves to the right, sweeping out area behind it. So clearly, this little square right here has a height of 1 and a width of 1. So this area right here is 1. So when we've, when we've moved to the right one unit, the area we have swept out is 1. And when we have moved to the right 2, you can see that area right there is clearly 2. So when, we, when we've moved to the right 2, we're up to a value of 2. And when we've moved to the right 3, we'll be up to a value of 3. And after we've moved to the right 4, we'll be up to a value of 4. So our graph of A versus X is going to be like this. And of course it will start at 0, because when we're right here, if we haven't moved to the right at all, we haven't yet swept out any area. So it starts off at a Y value of 0. So this is my area function. Now think about this function. The area, which is a function of X, what function is that? What line is that? That's the line Y equals X. Or in this case, A equals X. So A of X equals X. So clearly, the area here depends on this function. An area is a function of x. Not only does this line depend on this function, but this, this line itself, this area graph, is itself a function of x. And the thing to take note of is this. This function f is the derivative of this function a. Very simple. What's the derivative of x? It's 1. Okay, so if the derivative of my area function is f, that means the antiderivative of f is my area function. I'm going to say that again because that is key. If the derivative of my area function is f, then the antiderivative of f is my area function. Okay, let's erase this and um, look at another example. Or just flip the page, flip over to the next example in your notes. Okay, suppose we have this function, f of x is equal to 2. Okay, we'll do this one a little faster because it's just about as easy. And let's put some x values down here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, what does this look like? Well, constant function at a height of 2. And so let's think about the area under that. a of x. So we're going to graph that down here. This will be a graph of a of x. This is f here. So mark, mark off your x-axis. Both of these are x-axes. And on your area graph, mark this off as 1, 2, 3, and 4. And make this go up to 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. And you can hopefully see why. If we imagine a vertical line here moving to the right, as it moves to the right, it sweeps out some area behind it. And the farther it goes to the right, the more area it is swept out. And by the time it gets over here to x equals 1, you can see the area enclosed there is 2 square units right there. So at x equals 1, we're up to a y value of 2. The area is 2. When x gets to 2, the total area that has been swept out is 4. And when x gets to 3, the area that has been swept out is 6. And by the time we get up to 4, the area swept out is 8. And we could keep going, but I don't think you need to. I think you see it. 
Again, it starts at zero, because right at zero, there has been no area swept out. So we can plot this point down here at zero, at a height of zero. And the graph looks like this, and that's a straight line. And what is that? Well, that's the line y equals 2x, or in, in this case, not y equals 2x, but a, the area, is equal to 2x. And again, take note. The area here is a function of x, okay? And then note that the derivative of my area function is f. The derivative of 2x is just 2. So the antiderivative of f is that. Once again, the antiderivative of f is my area function. Okay, one more simple linear, linear example just to drive the point home here. Suppose we had f of x was equal to 50. Okay, so there's some y value of 50, and as x increases, the value of my function f here is just constant, but again, if we imagine a line here starting at zero and moving to the right and sweeping out some area behind it as it goes, by the time it's moved to the right one unit, we've swept out an area of 50. So down, down here we're graphing the area as a function of x. And by the time we've moved to the right two, we've swept out an area of 100. And by the time we move to the right three, you should see that that area is 150. And by the time we move to the right four, we're up to 200. So again, starting at zero, that's my function of the area. And what graph is this? Well, you can see that's a graph of y equals 50x, or again, in this case, not y, but a. My area, which is a function of x, is equal to 50x. And then again, ask yourself, what's the derivative of 50x? Well, it's 50. So once again, the derivative of my area function is my original function f. So that means the antiderivative of this function f is my area function. Okay, now let's do an example that's not quite so simple. f of x is equal to 2x, and the area function here won't be linear. But let's plot this. This is easy to plot. Okay, this is just going to be a straight line sloping upward, like that. Let's put some values on here. 1, 2, 3, Four, and so these corresponding y values will be 2, 4, 6, and 8. So you can draw those on your graph. Okay, once again, imagine a little vertical line, which will be infinitely short right down here at 0. And it, it moves to the right, and as it moves to the right, we accumulate some area behind it. Now the area you can see here is this triangular region. So let's, uh, let's calculate A when X is 1. That's what we're looking at right here. So let's calculate A of 1. Well, it's a triangle. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So this is 1 half 1 times 2. So 1 half of 1 times 2 is just 1. So let's plot this point. We're going to be plotting values down here when x is 1, 2, 3, and 4. And um, I'll tell you here, you go ahead and scale your vertical axis here up to 16. So make your graph look like that. Go 0 to 4 on your x-axis and 0 to 16 on your vertical axis, which is um, a. That's a of x and x. And we see that this area here 
when x is 1, the area is 1. So we plot a point here. We can plot 0, 0 right down there and plot the point 1, 1 right there. Okay, now let's move this line moves on to the right and by the time it gets to 2, it swept out more area. So now we're looking at this triangle. The total area swept out from 0 to 2. That's that triangle. Now area at x equals 2 is going to be 1 half base times height. So that's 1 half of 2 times 4. So 1 half of 2 times 4 is 4. So when x is equal to 2, we're at a height of 4 right there. Okay, let's keep going. By the time we get to 3, how much area have we swept out? What is A of 3? Well, that's this triangle. So it's 1 half base times height. 1 half 3 times 6. So 3 times 6 is 18. Half of that is 9. So A of 3 is 9. So plot a point on your graph there as best you can. And one more. We go on further to the right. And how much area do we have here? In this triangle, well, 1 half base times height. That's 1 half of 4 times 8. 4 times 8 is 32, so half of that is 16. So A of 4 is 16. So let's plot that. Okay, now what kind of curve do we have developing down here on our area graph? This is a parabola. Okay, and you can probably see this function here, A of x. What function gives you these values here for these x values that we were putting in? Well, this is the function a of x is equal to x squared. Just your standard parabola. It goes through 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and 4, 16. And again, note, the derivative of the area function is f of x. That means the antiderivative, the antiderivative of our original function f is the area function, the area under that graph from 0 up to that x value.